So it's been a little while since my last video on Siniguru Max, and that's partly because my enthusiasm has been kind of wavering up and down, but it's also been because we've been adding lots of new features, and also just documenting all this stuff has just taken ages. Um, but I thought the best way to show off some of these features was to show you this. This is the example map that comes with Siniguru Max, um, and it's basically just sort of a load of separate examples of all the different features working, and of course, um, with Siniguru Max, a lot of the elements are sort of connected together using the visual logic system. So it kind of shows you how you connect all these different bits together and in what order. Um, and it kind of just, yeah, gives you various different examples. Um, and I've also added some text zones actually, literally just today to kind of show uh, what, what each example is demonstrating. So let's just quickly jump into test game and I'll show you a few of these features in action. So some of this map is just replicating what you'll have already seen in the original sort of Siniguru classic. So you can have your static cameras, they can just do little sort of zooms or they can just be kind of pointed at a certain direction. Um, and that's really the most simple thing you can do. Um, but then you can start moving cameras. Um, so you can have various different sort of dolly shots and pans and tilts and push-ins on things. So uh, all of this stuff is, um, for anyone who's used the sort of Game Guru classic version of Siniguru, this is all pretty self-explanatory. And uh, a lot of these examples are more or less copies of, uh, of what we did in the example map for that product. Um, even down to things like focal points. So a focal point is sort of, uh, you know, your camera might be pointing off over here, but you can have a focal point placed somewhere else in the world, like for example here. And if you connect the two together, when you activate the camera, it'll point towards your focal point. And you can also build up a line of focal points as well. So you could have uh, three focal points, sort of one on each barrel. And by changing different parameters, you can get your camera to sort of pan between all three of them. So you end up kind of creating what I've sort of termed a path of focus. Um, basically, yeah, the camera follows a path almost in, in what it's looking at. A more nuanced example of that would be here. So what you can't see here is that there's two focal points on this goblet and then there's two focal points up by this character. Um, and by joining them all together in a certain way and kind of adding a few things into the sort of sliders that come with those elements, when you activate the camera, you kind of look at the goblet for a bit and then the camera does this kind of nice slow pan over to this character. Very cinematic um, and yeah, really, really useful. Um, we can also make cameras follow moving things now. So if you attach a focal target to a character, you can then have the camera follow that thing that it's attached to, which can be quite helpful. And then of course you've got control over actors as well. So it could be simple things like just having a character walk up to you and play an animation. That can all be dictated through Siniguru scripts. You can also get them to speak and look at things. It's about time. Let's get out of here. So you might have seen he kind of looked down here somewhere. There's a little mark for him, for him to look at that uh, is hidden. Uh, and you can also control multiple actors with one script. So you can have one actor come in and then you can have another actor come in and you can kind of get the two to sort of perform um, sort of one after another. But one of the big things that we've done for Siniguru Max, um, and this is only possible really because Game Guru Max is so dependent on dynamic lighting, is we've added scripts to control lights. So if you walk into this zone, you can activate a light and it just fades on. So that's that's fine. It's just a spotlight that's just pointing at that thing. It's uh, yeah, it fades on. It stays on for a few seconds, then it turns off. But you can also have lights that move. So uh, there's a marker now, a new marker called a light marker, and there's also a light node. And so when you activate this, the light marker moves to the light node, very much like a camera moves from a camera to a camera node, and it creates a sort of a, a moving effect. Um, you can also uh, point lights at focal points. So here, there's a focal point kind of somewhere on this wall, and the spotlight that's actually pointing kind of straight ahead like this, um, as soon as it's activated, is drawn immediately to point at that focal point. So that gets you to point lights at very specific places, which can be really helpful. Um, and just like with cameras, cameras can move, cameras can obviously follow a path of focus, lights can move, and lights can also follow a path of focus. So here is an example where the light is moving, but it's also pointing at a, a moving 
sort of path of focus almost. So what this allows you to do is uh, get some really interesting kind of spotlight, searchlight effects. Um, but you could also use it in other ways, to be honest. I mean, not so much with the pointing at things, but um, certainly with the moving of the light, you can use it with local lights to sort of move a local light through a scene, um, which could create kind of an interesting effect. You can also trigger multiple lights from the same zone, which is quite handy. Um, and you can trigger cameras and lights at the same time. So, um, and they can all have different uh, parameters. So one could uh, last for six seconds, one could last for seven seconds, and one could last for eight seconds. And of course, like all the other elements here, you don't just have to use zones to trigger these things. You can trigger them using entities. So here we've got a button um, and we are connecting it to uh, an unseen um, cine trigger entity and really the cine trigger entity drives everything else so when we click the button the lights turn on um, and there's other examples of cine trigger entities in action a bit further along so i'll just run around to the other set of examples over here some of these are reminiscent of ones you'll have seen in uh, cine guru classic so we've got the standard activate a camera with a button so that button is attached to a cine trigger entity and when you press the button it activates the cine trigger uh, Cine trigger entity and that um, activates the camera. Um, similarly, you can uh, use it to activate other elements within the scene. So you could use it to activate a door. And there's even an example that kind of builds in a little bit of a delay as well. Um, and it's it's triggered in a slightly different way, um, but it gets it gets you a kind of a a, a better effect, I, I think. So you can imagine in a kind of a puzzle game, something like that would be really useful to sort of show the player what their actions are doing. Um, we can also trigger things as well. Now, there is one example here that uh, doesn't seem to want to work in standalone. So it does work here. You can trigger the spawning of an entity. Um, oh, he says that and then it doesn't work. <laughs> OK, well, I've obviously messed something up there, but yeah, it is still a test. Um, but yeah, you're supposed to be able to trigger an entity to spawn in at that point. Um, that's funny, that was working earlier. I'm not sure why that stopped. Um, anyway, <laughs> so uh, other things you can do. You can do uh, handheld camera shake. Um, and you can also, so, so obviously the camera shake is shaking for the whole length of the shot there, but you don't have to have it shake for the whole length of the shot. You can cue the camera shake to start at exactly when you want it to. So for example, if this barrel were to explode, it might be nice to add some camera shake onto you know, that camera move. And this example kind of shows how you could do that. Interestingly, that uh, explosion decal is not transferring over to the standalone for some reason. I'm not quite sure why that is. And then we've got various other examples here for sort of image triggers. So here's an example where we trigger an image to display on screen. And we can also trigger an image sequence. So here we've defined the first image in a sequence. We've told it how many images there are in the sequence. And we've also defined what's the, the sort of length of time each frame should be on screen for. So at 60 frames a second, you're looking at about 17 milliseconds per frame. And what that allows you to do is have image sequences pop up on screen like this. So fairly straightforward example there. We've also got some uh, sound triggers as well. So you can kind of play a sound on command when a camera's running. And you can also have looping sounds. Still working on those. There's a few little uh, errors on that. So that I won't, I won't show that one off because I know that one doesn't quite work. And then the last two are credits. So you can have uh, credits kind of going across your game. In this example, the player can still keep kind of running around and doing their thing. Just press and hold spacebar to cancel that. Um, or you could kind of pair pair it with a sort of a camera as well as the trigger, uh, uh, as well as the credits. I can't speak today. So uh, yeah, you've got the credits and the the camera move there, which makes quite a nice little sort of ending. So that is the example map for Cineguru Max. Um, still a few things to be worked out, but it's coming along quite nicely. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Uh, you can also support me through uh, Ko-fi, which is a new thing I've set up. Um, basically because I didn't want to do Patreon. I didn't feel like I was producing enough content to warrant Patreon. Um, but if you'd like to offer like a one-time donation, that would be super appreciated. Um, or, you know, you can just wait for Cinegear Max to come out and uh, we'd really appreciate uh, you buying that when it's ready. But uh, as of yet, I can't say exactly when that's going to be um, because there's still an awful lot that needs to be documented, including with video tutorials and all the rest of it. So I really want to create a kind of a, a you know, a well-documented uh, tool set that's really 
easy to use and um yeah really straightforward so so thanks for watching and i will see you next time